Hi, um, my name is Therese. I'm with The Beat. Um, it's really nice to speak with you today. <laughs> Hi, Therese. Nice to meet you. Hi. Um, so you have a really impressive history when it comes to animated films. Um, what is it about Luca that makes it stand out from some of the other stories that you've worked on? Well, I, I think the, the pleasure and honor and, and kind of sometimes I have to still have to pinch myself is to to make this bigger movie. Uh, we have some, you know, we, we feel quite fortunate that we have the resources and amazing talent that Pixar has with this personal story, this, this wonderfully specific and one uh, 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 story. So I, I feel that is what I, uh, I pride myself with within these big studio um processes we were able to retain this little heart of of a, of a friendship story between someone who's very different and um that is really what i hope um makes it feel different and, and making something different uh was something that i really wanted to capture so uh there's so many layers but the love letter to italy and the love letter to friendship is really what i i, I treasure being able to tell and having gone through, yeah, having being an introvert, telling the, the story about an introvert, it's not always easy because they're not easy characters to understand. So finding a way into this, in, uh, you know, insecure kid that is starting to spread his wings is something um, I'm so glad we were able to tell the story. Yeah, for sure. Um, and what was it like for you stepping into the director's chair for this? I mean, this is your first like major film, right? Yeah, it is. After making a short um, like La Luna, um, you know, it, it's a very different world. Uh, I always joke around. It's like La Luna is they give you the keys to the little scooter. But uh, when they give you the keys to, to one of these, it's more like a ship. <laughs> and you have to drive it. Uh, so it, it's like it, it becomes... A responsibility that you don't take lightly you know and and it, it but it fuels you too so there's this wonderful sense of um purpose uh because there's all these amazing talented people around you to make it to help you and you have to tell them where to go and make you know three thousand decisions a day i will say it felt a lot meta because as a new director, sometimes you have, you, I've never done this. Am I sure? Am I, is that true? How do you trust your instincts? So we joked around that, that I needed to say Silencio Bruno plenty of times, uh, right? That there's something about being creative, being vulnerable, putting your work out there, putting your ideas out there that will bring some insecurities up and that we do need the Albertos of the world to tell us, you can do this, go for it. Um, and that, that felt kind of funny and, and, and wonderful that, you know, really, this is a movie about a kid just going through growth. And here I am having to learn so much and grow surrounded by all these, hopefully mostly friends that are helping me jump off the cliff. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, it was a, it's an adorable movie. And I love that message of like overcoming your insecurities and kind of like telling like the Bruno in the back of your mind to like be quiet. Yeah. <laughs> it's very um, relatable. I think we have, we have very internal uh, voices that are, are so mean. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Um, also, I have a question about the inspiration for the setting for Luca. So I know it's obviously pulling from like a small Italian town. On the seaside, do you have any specific inspirations that you pulled from? <laughs> yes. Having grown up in Genoa, Genoa is actually a big port um, with a long history. You know, it was one of the sea republics. And uh, along the coast, there's these beautiful towns all around it. So it's kind of where you lace up the boot. You know, Liguria is the, on the north, but it's a beautiful seaside. It's very rocky, so it goes straight into the sea. So the specificity of that land always fascinated me. And there are five little towns, they're called Cinque Terre. They became lately very famous because they're really hanging on on the rocks. These, these, these buildings are barely there. 
And so I always love that place. And, uh, you know, in the summer, I would sometimes go close by. We would spend some t- summers there. I had even smaller little towns memory. Our little country house was in a tiny little house four miles in, inland. So I, uh, the beauty of the place, the uniqueness of it made me want to do it. And my friend, my best friend, Alberto, and I were always at the beach all summer jumping off rocks. So that was made us want to make our own land. You know, you're not going to find Puerto Rosa on the map. Maybe some people will be looking, but it was a little bit of summation of that beautiful coast um, and the specificity of these wonderful towns. And now a small town has its own characters. There's all the usual suspects around the squares. That was something we wanted to capture. Yeah, I definitely think you captured it really well. It's funny because I'm actually planning my own like Italy trip and I was watching this movie and I was like, oh my God, this makes me want to go even more. <laughs> oh, I'm glad you're able to go. That's great. Yeah, I know. Oh, it's this, You know, Cinque Terre, I would say my biggest suggestion is like, take your time with it. Sometimes people pass a little too fast. They've had problems with over-tourism of all uh, uh, things. So th- they really appreciate staying a couple of nights. The walks between them are fantastic. And uh, yeah, it's, and there's also other towns around it. Camogli is one of them. The food is amazing. Every town has their own specialty. You can have focaccia al formaggio, which is this amazing thin focaccia with um, uh, cheese on it. Pesto is from there. There's a lot of really, really good food. That sounds so amazing. Um, and then I just also have a question about the character design for the sea creatures. I won't call them sea monsters because they're not <laughs> monsters. Um, can you talk to me a little bit about like the character design and how that was created, what it was inspired by? Yeah, the, the, the first inspiration were, were these old maps, ancient maps. The Carta Marina was one of them we looked at. It's all these wonderful maps of Europe. And then there would be like a few ships off the coast being attacked by leviathans, krakens, sea dragons, someone, you know, sea dragon chomping on a, <laughs> on, on a ship. And there is a beautiful graphic quality. Uh, there are really nice illustrations, swirly uh, puffs of smoke or fins. So we brought some of those nice, you know, the way fins are, are, are designed to these slightly more anthropomorphic uh, characters. We need to, characters that could hide in plain sight that was a big part of the conceit that mm-hmm. oh you could kind of be fooled they could look the part but that that's not their true nature right and so we needed something that was human enough but uh looking enough but and also of course we you, we we are a picture we always want them kind of beautiful and interesting but but scaly as well right so it was an interesting um process to find appeal but find also the transformation took us a while to figure out. Um, I, I love that, that, you know, in a dark alley, they still will have big scary eyes and that, that they, can be, they can be scary, but there's also a lot of appeal. We thought of them a little bit generationally. We even went closer to the Carta Marina design for Grandma, for example. She's a little bit of a twirly, ancient tale. Um, and, uh, and yeah, we, we, when we thought about the transformation, we almost felt like this should be an adaptation. They've learned to kind of be on the rocks and look like, oh, we have nothing to see here. Um, and, and that, that is a bit what we brought in. We looked at octopuses or squids and how they transform their, their cells. It's, it's beautiful. We brought some of those. Uh, things to the transformation and how it, we want it to be a little bit magical, a little bit, but also a little bit biological in some way. Amazing. I mean, it looks so, it looks so great. I love the like differences between the family members and then also like the uncle who lives at the bottom of the ocean <laughs> and his like heart is stopping. It was so cute. Um, oh, I'm glad I really... you like Hugo. Yeah. He's such a, uh, I know he was such a fun character. When I pitched it the first time, you're like, you want him what? You want him transparent? <laughs> Uh, that was not easy because, you know, using 3D, that, that's a lot of things to figure out. But now he's so fun. And Sasha Baron Cohen did an amazing, <laughs> amazing voice for him. That's so amazing. Um, well, thank you so much for talking to me and giving me a little bit insight into Luca. I absolutely love the movie. It was so, it was so uh, heartwarming and made me think of my friends and my family. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm very happy. Thanks, Therese. Nice to meet you.